We are now going to discuss how TCP provides reliable data transfer over IP's best effort. In other words, IP's unreliable service. We will see how the calculations of RTT values for timeout fits in the picture. TCP provides pipelining. It employs cumulative acts and maintains only one retransmission timer. Retransmissions are either triggered by timeout of the single timer or duplicate acts received at the sender site. To learn this process for TCP, let's first discuss a simplified scenario that ignores duplicate acts, ignores flow control, and ignores congestion control. We will discuss the simplified version first, and then we will add these mechanisms and their effect one by one. In our simplified TCP version, TCP sender receives data from the application. It creates a segment with sequence number, which is the byte stream number of the first data byte in the segment, and it sends it. It sends the segment and starts the timer if it's not already running. The timer might be running because the timer is for the oldest unact segment. The value for this timer indicated by timeout interval is the timeout value we previously calculated based on RTT value and variations. If the timeout happens, the initial segment causing the timeout is retransmitted and the timer is restarted. If an ACK is received, since it is a cumulative ACK, it includes ACK for previously on ACK segments. In this event, the ACKs are updated and timer for the on ACK segments started. The simplified scenario we discussed is shown in this FSM. Initially starting on the weighted state with initial values of sequence number and sliding window base, when the data is received from the application above, the sender creates the segment, sets the sequence number to next sequence number, and passes the segment to IP. If the timer is not running, the sender will start the timer. On the event of timeout, the sender would retransmit the not yet acknowledged segment with the smallest sequence number and restart the timer. If, still within the allowed time, an ACK is received, if the ACK sequence number is a valid on the fly byte from the sender's perspective, which is an in-order high value from the base, the base will be updated to this new value. If there are no more on ACK packets on the fly, the sender would stop the timer. Otherwise, restart it for the rest of the packets. Remember that this is a simplified scenario, not the complete TCP FSM. 